Welcome back to my garden. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Robin. I garden in uh, Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. So I've been trying to shoot this video for at least a week. The sun's going in, the sun's going out, it's pouring rain, it's not pouring rain. Um, so I wanted to walk around because things are changing every single day. Um, things are blooming, things are finishing. Uh, so if there's some redundancy here, I apologize. Um, I've been shooting this for like over a week um, and I'm probably going to do another garden tour in a couple of weeks. So let's walk around and see what changes since I started shooting this like a week ago. I'll try not to repeat too much. Um, and, you know, I also, I just want to say sometimes, sometimes the garden it seems overwhelming. I had a client that came over the other day and she's like, oh my God, you must spend every single day out here. I don't, um, but it can get overwhelming. And sometimes you kind of need to stop and say, wow, look what I've created. Um, because, you know, some days it's, it's pretty amazing um, when I look around and I think there was nothing here when I moved here seven years ago. So take the time to enjoy your garden. Um, you know, things happen, things change, things die, um, things grow unexpectedly. Some things look amazing. Some things look terrible. This has been a weird weather year for us here, um, in my area. Um, it's been a pretty dry, well, it's been very dry exactly where I live here. Um, but it's also not been super warm yet. So, you know, you just gotta take it as it comes. And, uh, so let's, uh, go walk around and see what's going. This week I wanted to do a garden tour and we're supposed to have like five days of rain. So while it's not raining yet, uh, I wanted to just take a walk around. So we've got some Eustacea by, and this is my purple bed, Salvia, Nepeta, Walker's Low, Allium Globemasters are on their way out, um, a still be chocolate Shogun. We've got some Carly Rose grass in the middle there. Uh, we've got a bunch of day lilies, both purple and yellow, and then we've got some black-eyed Susans and a beautiful catalpa tree. And right behind it is my new bed, and you can see this Dervilla is doing so good. I've got to say, I am so excited. Some of the changes that I made to the garden for this year, you know what? Gardens change every single year, and some of the changes I made, I'm really happy with. I'm looking for well, I'm, I've always been into, you know, the, the cottage garden style, of course, but I'm trying to get more of the different textures and different colors, and but repeat things so there's a continuation um, and draws your eye, so the purple, the purple, the purple, um, all around. So we have per, uh, Salvia Caradona here, Dervilla Kodiak Black right here. I've popped my dahlias all over. I think this is Princess Anne. I've got some pink lemonade baptisias right here. Got a reblooming lilac right there. A bobo hydrangea. A smoke bush, winecraft black. A wee bit grumpy hydrangea. Like I said, I'm trying to really mix things up and mix things in. So I've got Yarrow, Firefly Peach. Looks like something's been eating it. I can't win. Veronica White Wands right here in the front. The Spirea Double Play Doozy is gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Uh, these are alliums. I pulled these alliums from the front. Uh, last year I divided them because the ones in the front were so huge. And look at the size of these things. I mean, they're just... <laughs> they're gigantic. <laughs> They're gigantic, so they'll they'll bloom with little pink, uh, purple pom poms on them, kind of thing. Again, more salvia, caradona, peach berry ice, uh, hugra. I've got some containers in here with some uh, roses and some calla lilies. Another hydrangea right here. This is invincible spirit too, and it's just starting to put on some flowers. Got some calla lilies in here with some pink lemonade, lots of nepeta, which you know is my favorite. Definitely something is definitely eating the yarrow. Guess I better get out here and spray it. This is a yarrow called Vintage Violet. My ruby ribbons grasses 
look terrible in this bed. I don't know what happened. Um, Agastache is still kind of small. Agastache over there is still kind of small. There are a few of them in here. I've got a couple new Dianthus here. This is a Heucora called Dressed Up Evening Gown. I really like that. I could only find two of them at the time. Uh, Oriental Rose Lilies called Edatha. Leatris. It's amazing that this entire patch survived. I had a patch over there. Did not survive at all. New Sedum called Matrona. This is Coral Jade Sedum. From Proven Winners, I've got a couple new lupins. I've been adding a bunch of lupins this year. Uh, Shenandoah grasses, which, which you know beside ruby ribbons is probably my favorite. There's the Bobo hydrangea. And this is called, I think it's Blackout. Yep, Blackout Heucora. And look how pretty this is. Beautiful. So these two beds are really kind of prime right at the moment. The hawthorns, that hawthorn over there needs some cutting back. It's really, I, it's hard to believe I only planted these things like five or six years ago because um, they're just gigantic. The Kusa dogwood's still looking really good. So over the next week, I'm going to try and capture things that, you know, as they're looking good, there are a lot of things that haven't bloomed yet. Um, Queen of the Prairie right here. It's getting ready to bloom. The hostas are looking amazing. My Dawn Redwood I absolutely love. Uh, back here we have hostas again. Uh, Diablo Ninebark back there. We've got some Tiarellas. We've got some Epimediums. Palace Purple is doing amazing this year, Heuchera. Uh, those were Ostara um, Alliums. Got some ferns back there. My Rogersia is gigantic. I've had people coming over to dig up some of the ladies' mantle because it's just taking over and look at look at how much it's it's spreading. Um, I've got a bunch of us still be in here. I've got a huge Crosa Regal Hosta there. That big thing behind it is a runcus goat's beard. Um, I always forget it's there and I'm thinking it's in a still be and of course it's not and it's gigantic. This is a French pussy willow that I planted like seven years ago. Literally, it, you know, maybe it was three feet tall when I put it in. It's crazy. Hydrangeas not doing great this year. You know what? It's been a very cool spring and things are just not really taking off, especially annuals. This is um, Coringa Shoma. It's, gonna, it's called Yellow Wax Bells, and it'll have a really pretty yellow flower on it. It's definitely being eaten. This Ilex doesn't look so good. Um, I put in a Swamp Azalea back here. That looks okay. I think there's some Joe Pie weed there next to it that looks like it's being eaten alive. Some black-eyed Susans in here. And this part of the bed looks really good, but I definitely see a bunch of weeds. So this was Mount Hood Daffodils, Brother Stefan Hostas, and Double Play Big Bang, I believe it is, Spireas. And behind them are lots of anemones um, and lots of weeds. Uh, I love when Jenny at Creekside Nursery says, keeping it real, it's keeping it real. There's no, it's almost impossible for me to stay on top of weeding. Right now, this bed looks pretty good. Nepeta Walker's Low, Cotinus Winecraft Black. I have not reshaped this at all. I just planted it last year. So I'm trying to just let it do its thing. Black Lace Elderberry is growing really nicely. nicely. Cryptomeria. Aronia, thank God the rabbits haven't eaten it this year, but uh, I definitely have, I'm having issue with aphids on a lot of plants. So this is a blue glow thistle, and there's three, four of them in here, and I'm definitely having issues with that black bean aphid.
unfortunately, kind of get in in there, which stinks. Potatoes, doing amazing. This is all my cool flower bed. I planted these last fall, uh, doing great. I added some gladiolas in here, so those are starting to come up. Bachelor buttons, larkspur, bupleurum, feverfew. The gladiolas on this side, I think they're probably getting too much shade, so they're not doing too well. Music garlic, probably come out in a few weeks. I've cut off the scapes. Got strawberries, got lettuce I've been giving away like crazy. Got a new rose called Garden Sun Climber because my Zephyrin Druin did not survive. Um, we have tomatoes. These are toma the Titan tomato cages from Gardener Supply. Got zucchini. I think I might be sorry I planted two. Got a bunch of tomatoes. And then in this bed, from seed, I planted celosia, stock, scabiosa, straw flowers. Here's cup and saucer vine right here. Sweet peas right here. All of that from seed. Carrots, very slow. It's just not warm enough, I think. Um, and I think it's starting to rain. Geranium roseanne, looking great. I added some geraniums. So there's Roseanne. I added Bevan's Variety, three of them, and that's a pink one, a great ground cover. After it blooms, share it back, and you're good to go. Um, it'll just keep going all season. Paperbark Maple was brand new last year. Same with the Rose of Sharon, same with the Cryptomerias, and same with the Pine. Lots of new growth. I'm very, very pleased with the way things are working out. So looking from this side, Crosa Regal, uh, Seven Sun uh, tree. I'm definitely probably gonna be sorry I put that there. I'm, like I said, I love this Dawn Redwood. I cannot even get over how big it has gotten. This has been here for maybe three years, I think. Um, this is the GM that I just added underneath here called Triflorum, very excited about that. It's a beautiful, like, wispy flower. Uh, I gotta look that up. I think that's, uh, I don't remember. I have to look that one up. I've got some sub Siberian iris in there. More Queen of the Prairie, and my husband made me these plant supports um, to try to have something to corral it, because otherwise it was taking over this entire bed, um, and it gets in the grass, it gets everywhere. So this way I can have something to kind of tie it up to. I added a couple new boxwoods in here. So this is new gen box, and then some more drops of oregano Jupiter, which now you've seen me plant in a few places. Viburnum Marisi is finished. Let me swing over here slowly. Still working on getting supports and stuff up in here. So these are two brand new raised beds we did, full of snapdragons and zinnias and straw flowers and status. Um, some grow bags. I love grow bags. If you have never used them before, they're great. Our new silver maple right there. And we've got a lemony lace elderberry right there. And then two big pinky winky hydrangeas that will start setting flowers soon, and an entire hedge of Viburnum Marisi, and look at the size of that Norway spruce. Again, I planted that six years ago, so maybe it was eight feet tall when I, when I got it. Just spectacular. And then you can see over here the Colorado blue spruce, Coosa dogwood, there's the catalpa right there. So we've got some firelight hydrangeas in here. And some more Shenandoah grass. Look at the beautiful, this is Diana's Delight Clematis. Look how pretty this is. And then I just added some Penstemon Midnight Masquerade. I'm pretty sure that one of them, the white one, is probably not Midnight Masquerade, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, 
some milkweed self-seeding itself, lots of day lilies, cone flowers, sprinter boxwood. That one has never done too well there. I probably should move it. This is another sprinter boxwood here, ruby ribbons grass, cone flower. This is lemon twister, just starting. The cone flowers seem to be pretty good this year, which is nice. There's another firelight uh, hydrangea, foxgloves. Uh, reseeded themselves. This is a new one called Camelot Lavender. And then a nice big stand of Baptisias. Don't underestimate how big things will get. Here's an Agastache, Blue Fortune, and then a new um, box we'll call Winter Gem. I've also added, just for the hell of it, some red cabbage. <laughs> so don't be afraid to mix your vegetables in. And you can see lots of salvia caradona there. Another firelight on the other side. So I'll keep trying to pop some pictures on the screen of things. This is a new Dervilla that I just added called Ruby Wren, W-R-E-N. And then I've got Baptisia in there. I've got Amsonia String Theory in there more grasses, lots of flocks, drops of Jupiter doing amazing. And then last year you saw me pull out all the orange daylilies from here. So this is banana cream daisy. And I put a bunch of Cheyenne spirit um, cone flowers in here. Along the back, we've got Joe pie weed. We've got Herbstone Rebecca. We've got Henry, Henry Eilers Rebecca. And a Helianthus back here called Kareen. A Hellenium. And an Aster called Raiden's Favorite. So I just added a, an Agastache called Queen Nectarine. I've got lots of drumstick alliums in here. I think there are a hundred in here that will get going. I also just added a couple more double play doozies and a couple of pink profusion salvias, which have bloomed once, or they were blooming when I got them and I cut them back already. Sedum, Autumn Joy, I cut back once um, just to try to control them a little bit. It looks like the Alice Oakleaf Hydrangeas are starting to uh, Set some flowers. There. Lots of them, actually. This might be a good year. I have not been having a good luck since I transplanted these, and I've had these for years. Here's another group of spireas. Here's another tower that my husband made with a zebra grass. More daylilies. I have lots of daylilies. Carl Foster Gla Forrester grass. Another Pinky Winky and Barbary Royal Burgundy back there. I've popped in some Atlas Roses that I moved around from other places that it wasn't doing too well. And also some cone flowers in here. And look at those Concador lilies. They look amazing. So we've got a grass that I don't remember the name of. More day lilies. Here's my Calicarpa that you saw me cut back earlier. This is early amethyst. Got a container with cannas that I overwintered. Some Chemiciparis, another Carl Foster back there. Some more daylilies. Hydrangeas that I managed to save when we moved, you know, when we put in the greenhouse. And back there is some morning light grass. And then in between, you know, I've popped in different things. So I've added some yarrow, unfortunately, got eaten as soon as I put it in. That's just one, you know, a wild one that kind of reseeds itself. This is pomegranate that I added. Now it looks like we've got some sun coming out. So that's what's going right now. This mock orange is absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to make sure I showed it to you while... It's blooming. Got an Artemisia that managed to survive. We've got some Betany Mellow right here. I've got some baby's breath in there that I didn't think was 
I'm gonna make it because it didn't make it last year. Got an Amsonia storm cloud and a bunch of Verona castrum. And I don't remember what those boxwoods are. And then this, let me get up on the hill here, is a little king river birch that I absolutely love. And it obviously loves this spot. So headed back down, we've got lots of Baptisia that are blooming right now. I told you I have Twilight Prairie Blues and I have, I think this is Twilight. And then I think this one is Twilight Prairie Blues. So you can see a little bit different color. Lots of day lilies. The pal like I said, the Palace Purple Heuchera this year is insane. It's gorgeous. Mountain Mint back there and some more Cat Mint. Golden Full Moon Maple, Japanese Maple. The Mount Everest Alliums are finishing. Over here, Festivus Gold Nine Bark looks great, but my other one, Tiny Wine Gold, looks terrible. I'm not quite sure why. This is a very unique shrub here called Wickstromia. It's got a tiny little yellow flower. Most people have never even heard of it. It's a little small pine called Sarah Rachel. And then again, full of daylilies and cone flowers. I've really tried to, <laughs> I'm trying to cram things in so I don't have as many weeds. Palace purple, um, a lot of irises. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, I absolutely love these bearded irises. I'm glad I added them. Um, I also have some Siberians in there. I think the voles might've gotten to some of the tubers though. Got some uh, Gara that I popped in there also. Then swinging over this way, my Clethora looks amazing this year. The robins are going crazy here because they've got nests all over the place and they're not happy that I'm out and walking around. A new Clematis that I popped in called Stillwaters. I added some a still be dark side of the moon, lovely hosta back there. This view from the, in this bed, this view from up above um, in my house is so pretty when I look down on it with the Hakanakloa, with the Nepeta, with the palace purple, with the Solomon seal. There's another new gen boxwood. We've got a ton of still bees back there. Things, some things are just growing amazing this year. And look at the size of this dahlia. This one is called Rock Run Ashley. It's a new one for me this year. Here's a Primo Wine, Primo Wine, Wild Rose, sorry, Primo Wild Rose Eucara. And another gorgeous Cross of Regal Hosta, more Palace Purple, and a really pretty Begonia that I picked up just to put in this little pot and then some Japanese wood lilies. AB's Concolor. Again, it was maybe six feet tall when I bought it seven years ago. It's gorgeous. I love it. The smell when you rub it is like got orange. Uh, it's wonderful. I have a blue spruce, a Colorado spruce and a blue spruce and then the Norway. Now here's another thing. This is called Essex, 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 I think it's Essex Tower from Gardener Supply. I have finally found a support big enough for this non-vining clematis. It's called Mrs. Robert Bryden. It's got a gorgeous little uh, blue lavender flower on it. And I have been, I have changed the support on this like five times, trying to find something tall enough to actually hold it in. So I'm very, very excited that it looks like I finally got something that'll actually hold it in there. In this bed, which uh, is pretty much my shade bed because it's got really big um, maple above it. Um, again, while they're blooming, this is Gold Mound Spirea here. 
Got a couple of daylilies. I just added a bunch of euphorbias. Got a brunnera in here. And these are just about done, so I wanted to get in here and show you. This is Blue Kazoo Spirea. So look at the look at the pretty blooms on this. So I have I have three of them. There's those two there, and then the one I just showed you. I have two azaleas, not great. So I overwintered the colocaceas. More weeds, more weeds, and more weeds. Looks like the day lilies are getting ready uh, over here, starting to put on some buds. And again, look at the size of this gold mount spirea. <laughs> Gorgeous. And then I've got some astilbes in there, a Miss Kim lilac that I want to cut back, and then just some wild ferns in here. And I do have a climbing hydrangea back there that's really never flowered for me. But look at, look at blue kazoo in here. Really pretty. Really pretty. And then I also have an Aurelia. So I'm excited about this. I had it in a container last year. I'm putting, I put it in the ground this year. And so far I'm really pleased. Got a Barbary there. I'm sure it doesn't get enough sun, doesn't look great. And then we've got more of those French pussy willows. There's three of them and a red twig dogwood in the middle. Cause this area tends to be wet. Water filters down the mountain um, and flows back this way. This is a hosta called Elegans that something has been eating. More gold mound, black eyed Susans, uh, Euphorbia that's kind of putting itself all over the place. Another big Regersia. And then I tried a, put a Forsythia in here cause this little spot does get sun, but it doesn't really seem to be doing too well. I added a couple of hostas. So this is Hope Springs Eternal and Praying Hands. And then just some more Black Eyed Susans, some Alliums that I'm always hoping are gonna keep the critters away. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I added a Thelictrum here, not, not great. So that's technically a shade bed. <laughs> And the lilacs have finished blooming. I really want to get them cut back. Now's the time to cut them back. I've got tons of weeds, strawberry vine, Joe Pie weed right here. And you can see the, the nine barks are just huge. I think I covered these beds pretty well last time, but just a quick, a quick look. The, a double play doozy is looking amazing. Since I since last week, the white wands Veronica um, is really popping up, and the firefly peach sky yarrow. But uh, I've got bunnies that are eating it also. Uh, we've got some verbena bonariensis in there. There we go. Lots of nepeta. There's the firefly peach more close up. It's really beautiful the way it changes colors. I've got wee bit grumpy hydrangea over here. There's some salvias, the dahlias are all starting to open up a little bit. So this bed right here, again my favorite bed with all the purple and the daylilies will be starting really soon. The catalpa looks beautiful. Uh, the Allium Globe Masters are finished. Most of these Alliums now are done. So Globe Master, Gladiator, Purple Sensation. So I've got the drumsticks ready to, ready to pop. Over here, we have Salvia Caradona, right there. We have some foxgloves. Stop putting my finger right in front of the screen. Um, I've got a <laughs> Firelight hydrangea that's sort of way out of control at the moment. Kusa dogwood basically is is finished. So let's take a look back this way. We've got Japanese maple, Koto no Ito. Looks beautiful. In the fall, of course, gorgeous colors. 
this hawthorn really needs some some trimming that one branch is really really getting out of control so we've got some hydrangeas that are starting to show invincible spirit too like i said the dahlias are starting to pop their blooms this is vintage violet yarrow and again it's really being eaten which is a crime um, look back this way. We have uh, some containers, some eucara, lots of lilies. So let's keep walking around. The Dervilla looks awesome with the salvia right there. Baptisias. Look at this day lily. I, I mean, dahlia, sorry. Labyrinth. Wow, it's huge. I've just popped up the stakes. I haven't even tied things up yet. So let's see what we have. Here is a pretty container. And here's uh, Veronica uh, Wizard of Oz, A-A-H-S. And look at this gorgeous. I'm going to get around to the other side, too. This is Diana's Delight um, Clematis. Gorgeous some new penstemum. So one of the things this year that I wanted to talk a little bit about and show you, I've made a lot of changes to the garden this year, a lot of changes. Um, I, I'm trying to, one, cut down on weeds. Number two, make sure I've got a lot of different textures, um, a lot of different shapes, not necessarily a thousand different colors, because you know I'm real big on purple. So, you know, I've got like the purple Bactesia there. I've got the purple Salvia there. Got pur purple Lupins right here. Um, you know, Wajilia. So I'm trying to fill in spaces. So one, like I said, oh, that didn't sound good. So I have less weeds. Um, I should be getting mulch in the next day or so. Um, I have lots of day lilies that are getting ready. Like I said, here's the purple bed from, from this side. Lots of catmint. You know, I love my catmint. All these day lilies are, have buds on them. So let's walk this way. So after the first flush of flowers on things like Veronica and catmint um, and geranium like Roseanne, you can cut those all the way back and you'll get a, a new flush. Let's walk this way. Queen of the Prairie is getting ready to open up. Big pink blooms. Uh, Siberian iris is finished. Gorgeous hostas. The hostas are doing really well this year. Uh, Ligularia back there. Bleeding Heart is finished. More day lilies. Lots of epimedium in this bed. Lots of hookera in this bed. Um, like I said, the hostas are doing really well. That Rogersia is on steroids. And I can't get over how big my nine bark Diablos have gotten. They've only been here for like maybe three years. I don't, I don't even know. Huge Crosa Regal. Um, I had some neighbors come over and dig up some ladies' mantle because I have so much of it. Again, you know, after this first flush, cut it all the way back and it'll regrow. The Astilbe are getting ready to shine. Karinga Shoma is getting ready to bloom. Like I said, I, I don't want to repeat everything I said. Cotinus Winecraft Gold. I said it wrong the first time I was walking around. Um, I haven't cut this at all because it was brand new last year. I want to see what it's going to do. I am having a lot of trouble with black bean aphids this year on a lot of plants. Oh, check out the elderberry. That's blooming beautiful. So I've just cut back all the bachelor buttons. I just did that this morning, but I've got larkspur and Bupleurum here that are both uh, 
now blooming. Sweet peas. This is Balmoral that is blooming. Whoa, God, that is really annoying. <laughs> uh, I don't know what somebody's doing there. My stock looks good. Got a lot of annuals in here. The garlic and the potatoes are, wow, going crazy. Look at the size of the zucchini. I am really gonna be sorry that I planted two of them. And I've got a ton of tomatoes here between the cages and the grow bags. Broccoli, not so much. I don't know why the broccoli is not doing too well. All right, let's head on. It poured last night, so a bunch of things are really drooping instead of standing up nice and straight. Um, I haven't, I put in some supports for the Horta Nova netting, but I haven't gotten around to um, cutting them down to size a little bit. And uh, all the seeds I did are coming, they're starting to come up. The cosmos the sunflowers. So I've got a lot of stuff back here, a lot of amaranth, my new silver maple. Oh, I want to show you the Diana's delight from this side. Look at that. This might be one of the best years I have ever seen this. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Again, Firelight Hydrangea, a little bigger than I thought. I thought about Firelight Tidbits. They weren't Firelight Tidbits, even though that's how they were marked. So let's walk this way. Okay, you can see the sky is very threatening. <laughs> so I've added a lot of daisies and cone flowers. This is banana cream too. I added a Dravilla in here. So I'm trying to fill spaces. Got a lot of gladiolas in my grow bag there. I have a lot of weeds. <laughs> bee balm, I've pulled out bee balm every single year and it doesn't want to leave, so I guess it's staying. Um, this is some loose strife behind it. And let's flip around over here. So. In this area, we have banana cream too. Daisies also here. Let's get in there a little bit. And I think that's sombrero lemon yellow and Cheyenne sky. And my Agastache queen nectarine is starting. And then you can see the all the little heads on the drumstick alliums. Like I said, there are like a hundred of them in here. I'm loving Drops of Jupiter, but it, it is getting a little out of control. These two new Spireas, Double Play Doozy, do not look as good as my other one, that's for sure, but uh, they're brand new, so I'm gonna give, them, gonna give them some time. The Oak Leaf Hydrangeas, this is gonna be the best year they have ever, ever bloomed. Not sure what the difference is, frankly because I've had these almost 10 years, I think. And this is the best they've ever looked. All right. Again, some more Cheyenne Spirit. And lots of Concador Lilies. And I, I know I went over this area a little bit uh, on my first walk around last week. Um, so let's see what else. Not too much in the greenhouse. Bupleurum, Feverfew, some Dara. Um, I have some, a lot of yarrow being eaten. Some Gaura. So I've popped in some annuals, but not too many um, here. Oh my God, a dahlia on steroids here. That thing is huge. What is that? Blue Bayou. Oh my God, that thing is huge. <laughs> I did have to replace Tiny Wine Gold, that nine bark. I don't know what happened to the other one. It was not growing at all. Where that one, Festivus Gold, looks amazing. Can't, sometimes, you just can't figure things out sometimes. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna walk up and around. So we've got lots of daylilies here. We've got a lot of Baptisia here, which I showed you. Let me get in there a little more. It's really pretty. It looks really beautiful, actually. The monk's hood is ginormous. Like I said, that doesn't bloom till the fall. My Calacanthus Michael Lindsay is still blooming. Not sure what's happening with the light here. Um, it's gigantic. <laughs> and swinging around, my mock orange is still blooming. And we've got the Veronicastrum is doing amazing. Lovely little purple flower. And got some boxwoods in here. So let's see what else. Now this is a clematis called Elsa Spath, another gorgeous purple on this arbor here in the front. Unfortunately, somehow I lost the new dawn rose. I don't know what happened to that. Uh, the wisteria has finished blooming. This container is actually looking pretty darn good. And those lilies should be blooming soon. My seeds, uh, my ageratum and my, um, Salvias look great. I'm really pleased with that. Some of the seeds, they did better than I thought, but uh, the ones I started later are better than the ones I started earlier. No to self, <laughs> don't start seeds too early. I don't know if you can see the pollinators all over this Salvia caradona. There are like a hundred bees on here. I mean, hmm. It's kind of crazy. They are loving this. They actually have supports up. Um, normally, my Shenandoah grass is supporting all these salvias, but I had to replace that this year because they just looked terrible. So I've got some new ones. I did, if you remember, the, uh, this Salix. Ha, Hakuro Nishiki. Um, I cut that all the way down this year and it's grown back and it's been cut again. <laughs> and I opened up the bottom so it's a little bit um, more of a tree form. Let's see what else. Geranium Roseanne. Looking beautiful. Again, this is something that you can um, cut all the way back after its first flush and it will rebloom. Uh, Nepeta Walker's Low. I'm gonna actually cut this back after it finishes this first flush because I'm having some, some issues that I don't normally ever have. So here's the Salix from the front. And I'm starting to hear some thunder, so I think we're gonna try to go quickly. Look at this gorgeous delphinium. Uh, Black-eyed angel, I think is what it is. It's so pretty. I mean, so unique. And doing amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I haven't cut any of it for cut flowers, but geez, Louise, it looks gorgeous. So I have that there, and then I have a verbascum right here next to it. I don't remember the name of this one. I'll put it on the screen. Um, oh wait, it's called Wedding, Wedding Candles. Wedding Candles. Um, my seeds are coming up, so my zinnias are coming up. My bells of Ireland are coming up. And more drops of Jupiter in this bed here. Right here along the driveway, I have some annuals, my favorite, Play in the Blue Salvia and some other salvias in here. I finally got my hands on a few more Play in the Blue Salvia. Then we've got more catmint, some not doing so well. Already cut back the dutzias. 
So here's Tough Stuff Hydrangea. This is definitely all starting. There's a lace cap, and this is starting to come up. Oh, I've got some uh, angel lace, I think. Popped a grass in there recently. Got a few peonies. They're barely, <laughs> they're barely hanging on. Uh, rose with some um, pink lemonade. Super tunias um, that look like they're struggling a bit. Like I said, we had pouring rain last night, so it really knocked a lot of things down. Spirea Ogon looking fabulous. And Amsonia. Oh my goodness, this one is on steroids. Uh, Boom Chocolata. If you've never seen this geranium. Oh wow, I love this. So pretty. Uh, the flag irises have finished. The winter berries are putting on their berries. This hedge of <laughs> red twig dogwoods just is same thing on steroids here. I added a few more over here to the annuals to try and fill in, and hopefully they won't get eaten. Quick fire. And walking down the path, like I said, the peonies are pretty much all finished. I popped some coleus in over here. We've got Stokes Aster down in here. I'm getting my hair caught in the trees. <laughs> uh, lots of penstemum. Smoke bushes and nine barks and more salix. Some daisies getting ready to open roses, lots of day lilies right here in this bed. Little hydrangea over here called Wee White. Seriously, I don't know what's happening with the light here this afternoon. This huge thing is Persicaria. And I've got some yarrow hiding in there that I guess the bunnies haven't eaten yet. A couple of, this, Iris just found itself here. I have no idea how it got here, but it showed up about a year or so ago. And then walking back down to the backyard. Some containers. This viburnum is starting to bloom. Here. Got a clethora, white clethora here, where the other one is pink. Got some calla lilies showing up. And like I said, the containers right here, doing pretty well. There's my mahogany splendor hibiscus up on the hill there, or on the wall, and some of my sweet William seeds. So I think that kind of gets everything. Again, I apologize if some of this is a duplication, um, but it's really been a challenge between the humidity, the rain, the, uh, it's just, it's been a bizarre week. So <laughs> um, hopefully you found this uh, interesting and uh, I'll bring you on a tour again soon because things are happening every single day. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button. It really does make a difference. Um, again, if this is your first time at my channel, there's lots of videos on lots of different subjects. Uh, if you have any spring flowering shrubs, here's a reminder for you. Azaleas, rhododendrons, lilacs, dutzia. If you need to, to trim any of those things in your garden, you need to do it right now. So spring flowering shrubs need to be cut as soon as they finish blooming. Um, don't cut your macrophylla hydrangeas though, because otherwise you're gonna be cutting off your blooms. So I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.